Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about Hush. So this is also part of the 2420 series that The Farsighted is doing of films that we loved from 2000 to 2020. And I chose Hush. I thought that this was a very unique movie. Uh, I'm not typically into home invasion-y kind of movies because it actually freaks me out because those things happen and, um... Uh, yeah. So, the film starts out with our main character. She is an author who is writing in a nice desolated cabin. Not really desolated. There's some neighbors around, but not really any that are close. And the interesting thing about her is that she is deaf, and she is also unable to speak due to a childhood illness. So, we get to see an entire slaying of one of her neighbors as she's cleaning up her kitchen and that's when it kind of clicks in the uh the killer's head hey she can't hear me because the woman's literally banging on the windows and she doesn't turn around she just as you would you know and he realizes huh this could be interesting so rather than just smash open her windows and get her he proceeds to then play this horrible cat and mouse game where the one of the scenes that really stood out to me is when she's holding up the piece of paper saying, I haven't seen your face, please go, you know, that kind of thing, trying to bargain with him. He just straight up pulls his mask off and is like, now you see, sorry, I'm going to kill you. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free, but... That's essentially the bulk of the movie. I won't give away, you know, any of the, the, the meat of the movie, I'll say. What did I like about this movie? So, as you know, or as you may not know, I am visually impaired. So I like to see movies where they have strong leads that have quote-unquote disabilities. It's nice to see that they did not peg uh, the lead character, who is a woman with disabilities as a damsel in distress who's waiting for someone to save her because she is fully aware of the situation and she is taking very intelligent ways. She's taking very intelligent ways. She's utilizing things she knows to really help herself out. So she's obviously fully aware that she can't hear him coming, so she's going to you know, use other things or other senses to help herself out. And that just, it's really, I don't know if it's inspiring or it's like a breath of, you know, freshness coming in that it's not just someone, you know, if it's someone that has all their senses, I think that this movie would have hit me a different way. But because there's something I can identify with her personally, not having full use of one of my senses and really putting, you know, myself into it, thinking, what would I do? How would I, you know, stage things around my house to help me out? Because this person could hear her walking around or, you know, vocalize or anything. So she had to figure out, you know, stuff that was going to work for her. I really, really appreciated that. And I thought that they didn't pander to people that are deaf and make it, you know, every stereotype you could imagine. I really liked that she kind of found out that there was something wrong because she was video chatting with a friend or her sister, I don't recall. And they were just like, hey, are you alone? Is there someone in the house? And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here, you know. And then she rewatched the call and saw in the background and that creeped me out so much. That was very effective. I thought that was great. Um, just, ah, uh, and I love that the actress that they used really played this part well. I was really, really rooting for her. I really wanted, you know, everything to go well for her. I felt, you know, my heart really went out to her. Also the, um, antagonist, I felt like did a very good job. A little predictable sometimes, but that's how his character was written. That'll lead into my dislikes here. 
I did feel like aspects of it were predictable, but it didn't make me enjoy the movie less. I still had a really good time watching it. I've watched this a few times and it's always, you know, I still have that same feeling that I'm just cringing for her. Just turn around, just look, you know, things you want to scream at your TV. And, uh, I, I really, really liked this movie. Uh, you know, some of the pacing was a bit off for me just because I have a short attention span, but that's a personal problem. But, um, I think this is still on Netflix. You could always look for a physical copy if you're interested. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? Leave them down below. Do you have any other films that you could recommend that maybe incorporate those with disabilities that are not, you know, stereotypical bullshit that you think I might enjoy? Leave me a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you have not already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. I just realized I forgot to rate this. I think I would give this probably, probably like a 3.5 to a 4 out of 5. I really love this movie. It's great. Uh, hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My solo, as well as reviews with the groom, are available on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators as well for their picks for their 20 of 20. And I think I did everything out of order possible, but I hope you enjoyed the review. See you later, guys.